Quick question. When running A-B tests for your social ads, how long do you let them run before choosing which ad to prioritize and stop? Oh, man. Happy Wednesday. Look at my computers. We're in the office right now. A lot has gone on the last couple of weeks. And so many people keep asking how we're selling as much as we are and how we're selling on social. One of the articles that came out last week when we took on Brooklyn Point, Xtel, which is one of the biggest developers in the world, said that our social presence and our ability to market projects on social was one of the big reasons that they hired us over every other firm. And we've been around for like less than 50 days. And so I thought that I would spend this week's vlog going through and showing you how my team and how my company now sells through social and how we do it better than everybody else. Because if you're a real estate agent, you're in sales in general in 2020, and you want to be in this business for a long time, selling on social media, using the right types of lead and listing ads is incredibly, incredibly important. And so we're going to make this informational and I'm going to blow your mind. Now, I know a lot of you know me, but for those of you who don't know me, maybe this is the first time you've ever watched one of my videos and you're attracted to the caption and maybe you're in sales and you've been running your own social ads and trying new sales techniques and maybe they're not working or they are, but they could be better. Now, in the last 10 years, again, just to give you a refresher, I've done just over $4 billion in sales. I led the number one sales team in New York multiple years in a row, according to the Wall Street Journal. I was top three in the United States multiple years in a row, according to the Wall Street Journal. I was one of the youngest sales directors of all time at 26 years old, handling a billion dollar sellout in New York City. And I am now the most followed real estate brand in the world. And just to show you some recent examples of success, on social, using social ads. We had a townhouse at 253 West 18th Street for $15 million, okay? We ran the right types of ads for it, hitting different types of interest groups, and we found somebody who was looking on the east side of Manhattan through one of the ads, which was a video and linked back to the listing, who then brought through their family, came through, and paid $13 million for that townhouse when other brokers had had it for years and hadn't been able to sell it. And to give you another idea of how we use social ads right now with current promotions, we've got Black Friday coming up. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. We're doing a Black Friday promotion right now for a building that we're selling on Queens Plaza South in Long Island City called Hero Long Island City. It's a 20% off sale just through this week. It's a Black Friday deal. We've promoted it mostly through social ads promoting it to different interest groups and doing retargeted ads. We typically at that building have five or six people come through on a weekend. Remember, New York City is very saturated. There's lots of apartments for sale and it's tough to get attention. We had 40 people come through yesterday and we had nine offers in our first day. Now, I know you might be thinking, okay, well, Ryan, you've got 3.6 million followers and subscribers. Of course, you're gonna get people who are interested but those followers and subscribers, and hopefully some of them are you, and if you're not subscribed, please hit that button. Please hit it right now. Turn on notifications. The YouTube algorithm is huge, huge, huge for our business, and I would love you very much if you would just do that. So just give it a little tap, a little tap right there. Thank you so much. Our reach in order to sell goes far beyond the actual followers and subscribers that we hit because actually, you know what? I wanna bring in my director of digital marketing because he can help me explain it. Raphael! Hey Ryan, I'm right here, I'm right here. Oh wow, that was so fast. You know. This is Raphael, our director of digital marketing here at Surhant. And what he does all day, every day is social ads and everything else. So maybe you could tell everybody what you do so they could understand why your role is important. Yeah, so performance marketing is really what it comes down to. Digital marketing, running ads on social, and really expanding beyond our follower to just reach more people. That's the whole goal. And how long have you been doing this? For over 10 years. 10 years, a decade. That's a lot of time. Everything that we do in order to sell properties through social media, you can do on your own without the need for hiring a Raphael. And also don't take him, he's mine. There's so much we could talk about when it comes to selling through social, but can you give everyone the, let's say, the three biggest mistakes that salespeople make when 
selling through social media? Yeah, I mean, number one is people think that just by clicking boost or promote on their Instagram or Facebook posts that they're just gonna go and reach the right audience and the fact is that's not true. You need to go into Ads Manager and really gain control of your targeting so that your ads are showing to the right people. Like when you, when you hit boost on your post, what does that actually do? Is it just boosting the post to put in front of your followers more? Essentially, I mean, you're just not really targeted. You're gonna reach more people, so you're gonna gain impressions and you're gonna be able to see that reach metric go up. But it makes not, you feel better, but it's not really gonna right, do anything. It's, it's high level metrics, as I like to call them. They're, yeah. They look good, but it's not really translating into actual results yeah. for your business. You have to remember that Facebook is a for-profit business and they will reward people who spend money with them. Now, they allow you to put your photos and your posts and all that stuff up there for free, and your mom and your friends are gonna see them, but as you've noticed over the last couple of years, you know, people talk about this algorithm, the Facebook algorithm, this mythical thing, this craziness. It, it is so complex, but what it's really designed to do is to reward people who spend money. And you, me, all of us who spend money through Facebook and Instagram now are technically advertisers, just like Nike just like freaking McDonald's, right? That's what we are, we just spend a lot less money. And so the more you spend, the more the platform will reward you by putting your posts where you want them to be and they'll take care of you. And that's what you wanna do, spend money to make money. Otherwise, you're just fishing, right? In the same part of the lake you've been fishing in ever since you got on Facebook or Instagram. And those likes and those views you're seeing are from the same fish that are right there in that same part of the lake so you wanna go to other parts of the lake to find new fish, you've gotta know how to do what we're talking about right now. Really important. And to, to that fishing metaphor, also fishing with the wrong bait will not get you the right fish that you want. Yeah. And that comes into the, the value. What the offer is within your ad, the content, the images, how you're speaking to your audience, that's another big mistake that people make uh, and salespeople all around the world where they just think that oh, I'm running an ad, and this should result in the, in the objective that I set. But ultimately, you know, how you speak to your audience and the content is really gonna be the one factor that determines the type of engagement you get and ultimately the results. So give us an example of something somebody could do to run an ad with value that's not just an ad the way you just said. Sure, I mean, and we'll lean into creating a lead magnet. So offering free information or just valuable information to your audience in exchange for an action that you want them to take, whether it's a visit to your website, a visit to your Instagram or Facebook page, or a lead, uh, a lead form, a submission of a lead form. So a guide, some type of step-by-step -step that people are not able to really find online that you could just provide that. So, so like free information. Free information. Free value that will then hook people and bring them in. Because what you're trying to get is their information. It's the person's contact information, the person to go to your website. It's all about that CTA, the call to action, Absolutely. right? All right, what's the third mistake that people make? The third mistake is not testing. Just putting out an ad, and if it didn't work, then they just call it, and oh, I, I'm not meant to be on social media advertising, and this doesn't work for my business. And the truth is, you need to continue testing and iterating and finding what's going to resonate, whether it's the content that you're pushing on your, on your, on your ad, or you, ultimately your targeting. So you have a lot of control on these things and setting the right roadmap to test and test and test is critical. ABT, always be testing. There you go. There you go. I know in the Facebook community and the Slack channel for our, our pro members for the Salt Lake Sirhan course, we get questions all day, every day. It's a lot. Uh, and are any of those about social ads? I mean, I've seen some, but I know you see a lot of them. I mean, you're, you're the guy that dominates social media, so people want to ask you what questions, are the, what are the questions all the time. Oh. Let me see, let me play this one from Joe. Quick question, when running A-B tests for your social ads, how long do you let them run before choosing which ad to prioritize and stop? That's a good question. So we just talked about the third mistake that people make is not running tests, right? And so instead of just putting the same bait in and then being like, oh, well, these fish don't like my bait and then leaving, it's like, well, maybe you're using the wrong bait. So how long do you leave that test going before you pull one and just run with the other? 
Yeah, it's going to depend on the budget that you have, how much money you're willing to spend, sure. um, how large your audiences are and your overall geo-targeting. Now, sure. for a quick benchmark to do, depending on, on your budget again, is I like to kind of wait for each ad to get at least 100 clicks to make decisions on which one is performing better. So could you say it's the one that's performing better is the one that gets to 100 clicks first? Like no, no, no. Within that 100 clicks, how many results so if you're expecting to generate leads, how many leads were generated within those 100 clicks and whichever got you the most, then you double down on that one and you turn the other one off. And that's part of the optimization. Got it. Oh, this is fun. What, what's another question? Let's see. Hey, Ryan, this is Jorge from Boston. Question will be right. which social media platform is best to run your ads, Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn? So that's a great question. And LinkedIn, it's funny that you mentioned that. LinkedIn is a great platform to go and reach people that are in, in a different mindset as far as really being connected to other professionals or just people in the industry. Now, as far as really being able to expand your reach and be able to have more targeting capabilities, Facebook and Instagram is gonna be the two platforms that you really be able to dominate and again, reach yeah. a lot more people. Yeah, and your ads run on both, right? When you when you put an ad on the Facebook manager, you're making the decision, but they run on both. Yeah, you could isolate one platform. If you just want to run a creative or, or an ad unit on Instagram, you could do that or also isolate Facebook. But for the most part, I would recommend to run them both because again, the algorithm is not something that you're going to be able to beat. And once you tell Facebook uh, or the Facebook ads manager to run ads and you choose both platforms, the Facebook pixel and algorithm will be able to determine much better than you can what user and when to show an ad to. Yeah. What's another one? Let's do one more. Hi, Ryan. This is Ramita from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And my question is, are there any taglines or hooks you use for social media campaigns? Tagline or hooks? That's... Tagline or hooks? That's the storytelling part, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you need to be able to engage your audience. So, f And this is going to come through testing. You're not... There's not a silver bullet that's just going to work for, for everyone and every audience and every market. So really get to know your audience and you could learn through this uh, with your organic posting. Understand what kind of language and what kind of copy is gonna work best to then try on ads and expand that testing. Uh, but it's definitely engage your audience, tell a story and have a clear call to action. That's the best practice as far as building uh, compelling copy. Awesome. All right, let's do, let's do another one. Uh, Derek. Derek from Wyoming. Hello, Ryan. Derek Zarello from Casper, Wyoming. My question is, how many pictures is best to include on a social media ad? Oh, good question. That's a great question. Yeah. And there's single image or video ads, and there's also carousel ads, which we leverage a lot. And we use that for listing ads to really promote any other properties yeah. that you sell. And you get to use up to 10 images on that ad, but you don't have to use all 10. You could really if you have three, five, whatever is going to be sufficient to tell the story about that listing. Because as you point out all the time, yeah. facts tell, story but stories tell. Yeah. So. I think it's important too, you know, we'll, we'll run different types of ads for our listings where, what's the max, you can use 10 photos? Ten. Yeah, uh, where we'll use all 10, but sometimes people will click through, see all 10, decide, ah, that's not for me, and then scroll away. So sometimes we'll do less, like we'll do five, and we'll only use the five best photos to leave people then wanting more, where they say, oh, this looks interesting, but I didn't get to see the rest of the house. A click, let me take a look at this. Um, it's kind of that hook that Ramita was asking. About. Absolutely, and we go more into that in the course, yeah. uh, where we tell people about all the frameworks to really build compelling copy, as well as really building the right type of ad for the, the right objective. Yeah. We get questions like that from course members all day long. All day long. I mean, our course members are the greatest and super smart and they ask a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. They ask the right questions, which is great. Yeah. If you want to know more about how to run the best social ads for your business, we actually created a course. 
As you know, we have our Sell Like Sir Hant course, which was the number one selling sales course, think of all time, on the Thinkific platform uh, that is still out there. We're in 106 countries now, or everywhere. Uh, and now we have our social ads course. It is our second course. It is 24 chapters. There's worksheets, there's how-to guides, and it just became available today. So go to the link in the description, and I'm telling you, I think it is the greatest social ads course in the history of the world. There's actually nothing else like it, which is why we made it, because we get these questions all the time, and we see agents making mistakes all the time, so we actually made the fix for it. And you will triple your lead volume, because that's what everything that we put in the course does for my company in New York City. And if it works for me, it can work for you. And if it works for me at my price points, it'll absolutely work for you at your price points wherever you are. And so without uh, further ado, the course isn't also just me this time. It's me, it's Raphael, it's Amy Herman, who's on my team. And so it's a lot of fun uh, and you'll learn a lot. And without further ado, let's roll the trailer. I want this to be the be all, end all blueprint for how you sell real estate through social media. Now, I've been a real estate broker in New York for the last 12 years. I've done over $4 billion in sales, and I've been pushing the boundaries of the real estate business since the day I got into the real estate business. And then I realized that there was this whole untapped market in Facebook and Instagram where I could buy leads and use ads so that we could sell more real estate at volumes in which were never, ever, ever, ever possible. Soon enough, you're gonna be running Facebook and Instagram ads the same exact way that I do, and you're gonna be generating exponentially more leads for your brand and for your business than anyone else in your market. And that's what this entire course is all about. Now, I have over three and a half million followers across all platforms, making me the most followed real estate brand in the world. Everything that you sell, you need to shout it from the mountaintop. We follow up with everybody over and over and over. We never let leads go. Follow through with what you say you're gonna do and follow back with them until they buy or die. Winners and losers are decided upon based on who starts right now and gets working right now and who is gonna wait till tomorrow. It simply starts with you deciding to start. So get off that couch, get off complaint mountain. I've given you the tools and those fish are there. Are you ready with me? Ready, set, go. So remember, the leads that you're going to get are gonna make you really, really, really busy and then you have to go and sell them things. So that's the fun part, right? That's what I have to go do right now. I gotta find Yuri, I don't know where he is. I love you all, link in the description. Greatest course of all time, let's go.